Those people that say I deserve my time, that's all they can say. Even they can't argue with the fact that I did do it. Did the crime, did the time. Wait till they find out what actually is behind what I said. I can't say it. There you go. I'm gagged. I can't talk about what's going on. In fact, the whole point of pleading guilty was to just try and get it out of the way because there is so much more to the story. Привет, Ozzy Kozak. This is one of Avi's tactics. He stands up like on the hill, so he's taller than me. Eh? This is called Avi body language. It's not. It's not fake news. It's modified. Look, can you see guys what he does behind the scenes with Avi? He grows his hair. Yeah, and the hair's taller too, and he's wearing shoes with like soles like that thick. Uh, uh, listen, I think they should lock you back up, exposing <laughs> up your mini like that. Welcome back, uh, convict. You. Uh, you're on Thank parole, you. aren't you? Well, I'm on parole. I can't leave the state, which is great that you're here in New South Wales to get the inside, the other side of the story out. You know, there, there definitely is another side of the story. It's uh... So, I, you know, I have to ask because uh, I was inundated with requests to help Ozzy Kozak and there was a bit more we'll get into further into this interview. But the basic question that I think any normal person will ask is, why the hell did you go out of your way to breach a suppression order for... A case that's still before the courts. Well, let me put it to you this way. I pled guilty at the first available opportunity. Copped it on the chin. Did the crime. I did the time. Now, no one expected me to receive such a massive sentence for it. Breach of suppression order is a crime that in the, by parliament is comparable to possession of, you know, prohibited substance. Maximum 12 months penalty. It's like if someone got found with a small bag of recreational drugs and they get 10 months. Unheard of. They usually get a fine. I mean, we all know Darren Hinch's case. He got home detention and he got a fine. And he was on 3AW, no national radio, and he breached it three times and breached it properly. Now, I did say the name of a, uh, you know, accused alleged pedophile. I did name him. The, f the full, full story, again, I can't talk about why, what was the context, but the, the other case which is, uh, what, which is involved is before the courts. It will be over soon. We look forward to a favorable result. And you know, suppression orders uh, are good when it's protecting uh, victims and witnesses. Not, not always. Sometimes it is there to protect the... Uh, Course of justice. Yeah, and, well, and also sometimes per alleged perpetrators are innocent and you drag them through the mud and once you call somebody a rapist or a child molester or a child rapist a pedophile, if they were innocent, they're always going to be tarred with that brush. And that's the thing. In your case... In your case, from what I understand from our conversations and from everything you're telling us, is that once, once the full truth is able to be revealed, the entire context of it, people, even the people who question what you did that day, will look at you as a hero instead of the villain. When you hear the circumstances and the context of what actually went on, right? There's a lot more to me that and, meets the And it's life. personal. It's personal. Yeah, I, I, I know this person, right? I know victims. I know what happened to them. In fact, the police didn't act on this. Actually, I probably we can't even say. We won't, we won't go into that. But it's personal. There you go. Just, it's, it's on camera. I'm being gagged right but, here. But it's personal. And that's what people, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Yep. You know, the way they treated me, I may as well have been Osama bin Laden. They slapped a national security interest designation and an extreme high risk inmate designation, EHR NSI. What does that mean? You know, that's very rare that they actually use that. And that's designed for the most dangerous prisoners. Uh, terrorists, you know, prisoners that they can't be left alone with a guard because they'll bite the guard's ear off or something. So I was chained here with a belt around here, chained there, legs chained together, orange jumpsuit. Now when I'm walking, you know, through the jail and there are other prisoners looking at me, you know, murderers, you know, guys doing 15 years doing wax. They're looking at me thinking, who's this guy? You know, and I'm only in there for basically saying a name. I was trying to get the word out through my wife to journalists. It was very hard. I wasn't allowed to use the phone. You know, even the maximum security, worst inmates could use the phone. Because I'm national security interest, I can't use the phone. You know, the only time I can use the phone, if there's a guard real-time live, sitting on the other line monitoring. And at any time, they just hang up if they hear something they don't like. So my poor wife is there, the only one I can contact out of all my people, even though they're embarrassed to see me. And I said to my wife, get a message out to Rebel News. And I said it in a sort of, you know, cryptic way, so they don't realize. And she, she's really good. She understood what to do. So she recorded my message to Rebel News. My wife then forwarded this voice recording. It's basically, hi, Arby, you heard that message, yeah? 
said, hi, Avi, this is what's going on, blah, blah, blah. The commissioner is targeting me, national security interest. Now, the next day, 7 o'clock in the morning, boom, 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 on my cell door. Intel rocks up, all right? High-ranking uh, guards. And don't forget, when this intel walks into the wing, all the prisoners are like, what's going on? Because you don't see winter intel walking around these high-ranking uh, officers for no reason. So they come into my cell, they go, Boykov, we're charging you. So what are you charging me with? They said, counter-terrorism intercepted a message from your wife to RV Yemeni of Rebel News. And I'm like, get out of here. This is what we're talking about. This is direct proof of the fact that the government is deploying counter-terrorism tactics, resources, and legislation against journalists. Exactly what we've been saying. So counter-terrorism uh, intercepted this transmission. They come into my cell. They charge me uh, with uh, passing out a message from jail an author unauthorized message to a third party. That was the first charge. The second charge was making a misleading statement. They alleged in the, in the jail charge that what I said to you was not true. And I said, what part of what I said to the journalist was not true? And they said, the commissioner is targeting you. I said, of course it's true. I'm an NSI, of course the commissioner signed. The commissioner personally signed. The New South Wales commissioner personally signed to apply this NSI status. Um, I objected. I said, not guilty. But in jail, you, can't, you don't have a fair trial. They ask you guilty or not guilty. It's just for formalities. If you say not guilty, they give you twice as much penalty. So what they did, they took away my only, my only you know, luxury or my only access to the outside world, yeah. calling my wife. They banned me. They took my wife's number away and I couldn't call anyone on the phone. Could you imagine being in Long Bay? Remember when it was raining every day? It was cold, wet, sad, you know, maximum security. Couldn't call my own missus because... They accused me of sending a message to a journalist. You know, we live in a world where truth is a national security interest. We live in a world where truth is a threat to the government, the threat to the police, a threat to the prosecutors. We see every day, all the time, people are going to jail on dubious, fabricated, false, vexatious charges. Look at Daniel Keneally, the son of Christina Keneally, just a few days ago, finally arrested. And he stitched the bloke up. You know, those who think the Aussie Cossack was stitched up, of course I was stitched up. I mean, yes, you could argue I, I did the crime, but it's all circumstantial. It's all in context. Now, there was very serious context to take into account here. Did I intentionally and recklessly go out of my way to breach a suppression order? No, because I know so much about that case, right? I know details that will make your hair stand on end. I'll make your details that will make you be sick in the stomach if I told you. All I did was name the bloke. Now, if you want to say the Aussie Cossack's wrong, if you want to say the Aussie Cossack deserved what he got, be my guest. But you know what? Uh, there's a lot of people out there, many Australians, who will say, yes, he did the crime, he pled guilty, you know, but they'll say, Aussie Kozak, I'll buy him a beer, you know? I think it's important for people to get the entire context, which we will give it to them in time when it's, uh, when legally possible. Yeah, uh, you know. I'm not willing to go to jail for, like you. I'm not as tough. I don't think I'll be as welcomed by the prisoners as you. Why not? I'll you. No, I'll write your name on the wall. I said, if Avi comes in prison, look after him. All right, mate.